What I'd like to show you today is a technique I use an awful lot to go from real-time performances, which I like to obviously create for record productions, but then there comes the point you have to create a printed score very often, and um, most performances are in real, what we call real-time. You don't play with a metronome. And uh, therefore, you, your music ends up being totally outside of measures, so putting it into notation can be very difficult. I suggest you do all your real-time performances at <coughs> 200 beats per minute or higher, because Digital Performer can only go as fast as 400 beats per minute and as slow as 20 beats per minute. So finding something in the middle uh, when you're working with tempos gives you a lot of latitude above and below. I'm going to arm the piano. I have my ivory piano for this. I like the sound of that. Uh, but you could use your onboard uh, MIDI piano or whatever. Or if you have your performance done, that's another situation. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play a really erratic um, version of Happy Birthday, as I said. I'm, I'm going to go to Project, and I'm going to put in Happy Birthdays in three, four times. So I'm going to uh, go to the conductor track, and I'm going to change the meter to three, four time. There it is, three, four. And I'm going to make the quarter note the beat value. That doesn't matter when I'm recording it, but later when I want to tap the t tap where the tempo is, uh, I w I'm going to be tapping quarter notes, so I'm leaving it at the quarter. And you see it pop up there, three-quarter time. I'm going to open it up a little, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to put this at at one, three, zero. That's where I'm going to start recording, because Happy Birthday starts on this beat, and after I do find the measures, I want it to still be on this third beat. You don't have to do this. You could always shift things around after you've done the tapping and put it in the correct time signature. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit wait because I want it to start here. So when I hit record, uh, it'll wait until I actually start playing. And it will start at 130. Okay, so I'm going to start to play. I'm going to do a kind of an erratic version of Happy Birthday here. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm going to bring it back in. We'll crunch this window up a little bit so we can see the whole sequence. I'm going to go to the quick scribe, and you will see that it doesn't look anything like Happy Birthday. Uh, everything's out of measures, out of bars. My God, I don't think, um, unless you actually read through these notes, you may not recognize it. So now what we're going to do is go back to the track. I'm going to rewind my playhead. Uh, and... I'm going to bring up the uh, another window, for starters. You go down to the bottom and you click and you drag that up in case you didn't know how to make two windows. Uh, I'm going to go to MIDI so I can see my tune. Because when I tap the tempos, I want to know exactly where to tap. I'm going to set that playhead back at 1300 again. I'm going to now unarm the track. I don't want to hear the piano while I'm tapping. Um, and I, I'm going to undo uh, the wait button because I don't want anything to wait while I'm tapping these in. And so I have this set at 3130. I'm going to be able to see when these new notes are coming in. So my tapping of, uh, w when I tap the beats, so I'm not tapping measures, I'm actually tapping beats. So I'll be tapping here. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. And you can see where, where I'm going to be tapping to tell the app where each beat is. And, of course, I'm starting on 1, 3. Okay, so how do I do that? I bring the project window down and go to conductor track and go to record beats. Right there. And it says here that OK, if when I click OK, that'll be my first tap. Do I want to shift the data to 1-1? One, one? No, I'm making every effort to get this to start at 1-3, three, third beat of the first measure. So, but if in fact, in your case, you want to do that, you could, of course, click click this box. 
Okay, so I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to tap along with where the quarter beats are in this song to the best. Oh, let me just mention one other thing. You want to really make it better, bring your tempo down to maybe half of what you originally had. That way, it's much easier to be ready for where those beats are. So I'll go back to my project, conductor track, and record beats. So here we go. I'm going, and by the way, you can play any key on your keyboard. Uh, here we go. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click all the quarters. Here we are. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, tap, tap. Okay, now we'll stop the sequencer. And you'll see what happened. It created um, a tempo track to go along with my guys. Let's see how well I did with this. We'll go back to the beginning, and I'll put it on Quickscribe. And we'll see if it's any neater than it was before. Wow, that looks a lot neater, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, <laughs> everything. This is maybe the best I've ever done with this. Um... Okay, now, if you look, though, at the actual MIDI data, there's two tricks I'll show you to really get this cleaned up. You'll notice at the end here, you've got this overlap, but that's okay. We can see that if you go over the track here. See at the very end how that overlap this note? You're seeing that there. All right, so I have a little trick I play. The first thing I do is I know the smallest note here is a, an eighth note. So I'm going to select everything. Select all. Command A. And I'm going to go to Quantize. I'm not going to do the releases. I'm going to do the attacks to the eighth note. Make sure Tuplet's not turned on. Okay, and I'm going to apply it. Now, it looks pretty much like it did, but you'll notice everybody's starting exactly on time here. The next thing I do is I go to Region Duration, and I make everything... I make everything a really small note. You could set this to anything. Right now, it's set for a little... A little less than a sixteenth. So I'm going to now make all the notes. You can see them down here. They're all very short. Nobody's overlapping. Then I'm going to I'm going to leave them selected, and I'm going to go back up, and I'm going to go to duration again, and I'm going to extend the releases to ninety nine percent to the next note. That means that this note that's starting here will extend its way all the way to this note right here. And this note all the way to that one, and that one all the way to that one, that eighth, that, <coughs> what is an eighth, all the way to that eighth, etc. So I'm going to click, and you'll see it did it very well. We no longer have that overlap at the end, but I would like to make this a three-beat note, so a couple of ways I can do that. I can go here. I could extend it right here that way. Or I could have typed in uh, the length here to 3, 0. And that would have made it exactly 3 beats long. We'll set the tempo, let's say, at, there's one left here for me to deal with. We'll set that around 120. And if you listen to it, you will see that it sounds uh, <laughs> deadly on. So you can see, the one thing we never want is to hear music played in exact tempo this way, but that's the way it has to be done for notational purposes. And then we write in all our words like retard and accelerando and fermatas to hold the note. But this is the, the in fact, we have a big fermata right over this note. -da 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 -dum. There's a big fermata here. Then, da da, on three end, back to the piece. But this is the way Happy Birthday is written. So, if you have any questions, please leave a comment under this video, somewhere under comments, and I'll see if I can get back to you. But it's a pretty simple process. The biggest thing being, of course, conductor track, record beats. Okay? So, I hope it's been illuminating, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.